Hey, what's going on everybody? So today I'm going to make another fly tying vise video. This time focused on four sub $200 rotary vices. A question that I see come up all the time on fly fishing forums and Facebook groups and things is something along the lines of, I've been tying for six months to a year with my cheap starter vise and I'm ready to upgrade to a good quality rotary vise. What do you recommend? And it seems like $200 is the most common budget that people set for making this upgrade. Now, there are a lot of sub $200 rotary vices on the market, from brand name stuff to overseas knockoffs. There's a ton of them out there. However, whenever these questions come up, there are four vices in particular that are always being recommended. These four vices are the Renzetti Traveler, the Peak Rotary Vice, the Griffin Montana Mongoose, and the Wolf Atlas Rotary Vice. Now, vice selection is extremely subjective. What I like in a vice is not going to be what somebody else likes in a vice, and that's okay. But I thought it would be cool to make a video, something of a, a shootout, a, a comparison video, specifically focused on these four vices because they're so popular. So over the last few months, I've acquired one of each of these vices, and I've been tying on them to get a feel for it. And I'm just going to go down the line of each vice, and I'm going to talk about how it's made, each vice's features, what they do well and don't do well, what I like and dislike about these vices. And I'll sum it up at the end with what I've come to decide is my favorite vice out of these four, and the one that I would recommend to people looking to make such an upgrade. With the end goal being, hopefully, this video will help somebody that's in such a situation looking to make an upgrade maybe narrow their choice down a little bit. So I'm going to move the camera around here and just jump okay. right in. So the first vice that I'm going to look at here is the Wolf Atlas Rotary Vice. This is a true rotary vice made in the USA and retails for about $170. You can find it for a little bit cheaper, a little bit, I've seen it a little bit higher, but $170 seems to be kind of the ballpark range. You can get this vice as a pedestal or a C-clamp. This particular one is a pedestal. I like all my vices in pedestals. I'm not a fan of C-clamps. However, if that's your preference, you can get that as an option. Uh, it used to be that this vice came with both a pedestal and a C-clamp, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. You can, of course, get both, but I think they just charge a little bit more. As I said, this is a true rotary vice, meaning that you can set the jaws so that your hook shank spins on its own axis. axis. And in order to do that, you simply loosen this uh, black kind of wing nut right here and that allows you to move the jaws up and down to account for the size of the hook. So you ultimately you want your hook shank for true rotary you want your hook shank to be in line kind of with this shaft right here. Uh, personally I don't really worry about that if it's out of, uh, if it's not perfectly lined up all that is is just creates a little bit of a of a wobble of a wider circle as that hook spins and since I don't do a ton of true rotary tying, that's not a big issue for me. Um, I use rotary vices for flipping them upside down to tie the underside of clousers. Um, using UV resins for bodies and heads and things, I'll use the rotary to, I'll put the resin on there and use the rotary to kind of shape it. Um, I do wind some basic bodies, chenille and diamond braid and things like that using the rotary. But other than that, I don't do a lot of like high speed true rotary tying, so I don't tend to adjust this much. I tend to just put it where I want it and leave it there. And when I go from to different size hooks, they'll be slightly out of out of orbit on their, their rotation. And that's totally fine with me. It's not a big deal. Um, this, base, this vice is made almost entirely of stainless steel. There's very little plastic or rubber that can break or go out on these vices. Um, three things that jumped out at me right away that are plastic are there's three of these little black kind of wing nut screws. Um, there's this one that I pointed out that, that adjust, allows you to adjust the, the jaws. Then there's one on the near side of the vice body here, and that's to lock this in any position as you rotate it. So if I want to tie a clouser and I want to flip it upside down and not have it move around, I can simply tighten that wing nut, and now it's not going to move. Um, the third one is right where the, the vice stem goes into the coupling on the, onto the pedestal base, and that you just put the vise in and then tighten it down and that just keeps it from spinning around in there. Um, but both of this, this wing nut and the one here on my near side can be moved to either position um, to accommodate for a left-handed tire or your own personal preferences. Um, this particular one, for example, when it came out of the box was on the near side 
and I found that it just kind of got in my way when I was my hands when I was tying. So I moved it over to the other side. It's very simple. Um, as far as adjustments go, the the arm for controlling the rotary it can also be moved. There's three other positions where that can go. Um, I don't know why one would want to do that, but uh, if you like it in a different position, you can do so with this vise. Um, you can control the rotary tension. There's a knob all the way at the very end here. If you back it off, it's going to allow you to spin very, very smoothly and fast. And if you tighten it down, it's going to add a lot more friction to the, to the rotary as you're tying. Personally, I tie with, with a decent amount of friction. Um, I do like this setup with the knob in the back as it really doesn't seem to come loose. Once I get it where I want it, I don't have to constantly be adjusting it, which I always find to be a, a nuisance. Uh, per manufacturer's claim, this vise can hold from up as, as high as 7 knot hooks down to size 32. I cannot verify the size 32 end because I simply don't tie anything even close to that. Um, the smallest hook that I could find today for an example was a size 12 fire stick. So um, you're just going to have to uh, find somebody else that can, that can confirm that size 32 business. However, I do tie on a lot of really big hooks. Um, I haven't tied on a 7 aught in this vise, but I have tied on 6 aughts and it held it just fine. Uh, this is a cam style vise with a big knob right here to, to make your adjustments for your hook sizes. So you, depending on the size of your hook, this, this knob right here uh, opens or closes the jaws so you can kind of get it in, into the range that you want it before locking it in with the cam. So there's also two, there's two uh, grooves in the jaws. I'm sure you can't see that. Um, that's for sort of large hooks and medium hooks. So for basically everything that I tie, I'm putting it in one of those two, two grooves. Um, for really small hooks, you're going to put it more up into the flat part of the tips. But since I don't do that, um, I can't say how that works terribly well. So to put a hook in this vise, you simply, uh, you find... This is a size 6 Daiichi 2546 saltwater hook. I tie on a ton of these. This is kind of my standard sea run cutthroat hook. Um, so I'm going to put it in that first, first groove. And I'm going to adjust the jaws. Um, you, don't want them, you don't want them to where they're touching the hook like a lot of uh, normal cam style vices. You, you have to have them a little bit wider than that. And you simply lock it into place. And once, once, it, once you get it set right, this thing holds a hook very, very well. I will just uh, jump up to a, this is a 6 aught A-Rex Predator Stinger hook. So I'm going to adjust these jaws out quite a ways. And I'm going to go to the, to the furthest back set of notches, or so the furthest back notch. And get that where I kind of where I want it. And lock it in. Once it's in there, it holds it very well. I bet I could bend this hook out. Um, the other end of the opposite end of that spectrum, this is a size 12 fire stick. Uh, that's like a 953 or something. It's a very short, short shank, wide gap, light wire hook. Um, this one I'm going to put kind of in the flat part of, up at the tips and just lock it in with the cam. That's way too loose. Still not. There you go. So, things that I like about this vise. I like how well it's made. It is very solid. It's all stainless. It feels good in the hand. The rotary is smooth. Once you get, a, once you get it set right, the jaws hold hooks really, really well. You're not going to have to deal with slippage. And I really, really like the pedestal base. This is probably one of the nicest pedestal bases I've ever used. It is super heavy. There's no, I know you can't see it. Um, it's, it's just a square. There's no, there's no pockets. There's no anything fancy about it. It's just a square piece of, I don't know, lead or whatever the heck it is. Something real heavy. Um, but it, it does not move. I tend to be a pretty heavy-handed tire, and I have that issue with a lot of vices, pedestal style vices, where. I'll have a big hook and I'll be pulling hard and it'll kind of get tippy or maybe it'll want to slide around. This one does not do that. This pedestal base is fantastic. 
it is realistically it's probably my favorite thing about this vise um, I do like how simple it is this does not come with a lot of features that that uh, you're not going to use um, it's not going to overwhelm you with its fanciness it's a, it's pretty basic true rotary vise uh, the only thing that it really comes with is a little material clip here I don't use material clips so you know whatever I don't care about that it does not come with a bobbin cradle um, I don't like bobbin cradles so that's not an issue to me however it is worth pointing out some people definitely like those and it, it can be a bit of an issue to not have one uh, the things that I dislike about this vise, first off, the jaws. I, I've never been a fan of this style of jaw where you have to adjust the big nut um, and then use the cam. I'm, I'm much more accustomed to the to the standard kind of cam style where there's a little screw that you adjust right up until the, the jaws are just touching the hook and then you just lock the cam. I find for me, because I'm not used to this style of, of jaws as much, that it takes me a little while to kind of get the feel for where I need to set it because you don't simply just adjust it so that the jaws are just touching the hook you actually need it a little bit wider um, it also these style of, of um, jaws always seem to take a little more power to to get this to set where i want it to get it to hold the hook tight whereas with a more standard style cam jaw i can just kind of flip it up with my thumb that's just personal preference um, but it, you know as I said before, vice selection is very subjective, and, and I just I just don't like spending much time fiddling around with, with getting a hook in the vice. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of these jaws. While they do hold a hook extremely well, I don't like that it just takes me it takes me a little too long to kind of get it into the groove and get it set. And and again, that's just me, but uh, you know it, this is this is a kind of an issue for me. Uh, when tying on this vise, to me, it feels a little bit cramped. Um, I think it, part of that is because it's not much distance between the, the kind of the body of the vise and the jaws themselves. And I have big hands, so if I'm tying, I'm kind of fighting with stuff. And the angle, when I flip this up to do clousers, the, you know, and it's an issue with all true rotary kind of V-style vices. But I just find that it gets, it gets a little bit tight when I'm trying to tie the underside of a clouser. Um, I'm a saltwater guide. I tie a ton of clousers, and uh, anytime I, I tie on a new vise, I, a clouser is always the first thing I tie because uh, it needs to feel good tying a clouser for me. And this particular vise doesn't. Again, that's that's totally subjective. So you know, take that with a grain of salt. But it's worth mentioning. A um, couple other little things. Um, there's a little bit of wobble uh, where the vise stem goes into the the coupling on the pedestal base. I don't know if that's just the particular vise that I ended up with. Maybe something's just slightly out of out of spec, or you know, a little bit warped or something. I don't know. Um, this is the only one of these I've ever tied on, so I have nothing to compare it to. But it's not a big deal. But it is a little bit annoying. Um, it just doesn't feel right when that thing moves around. There's also a tiny little bit of play in the vise uh, head here, where it comes out of the body. And I mean, it's just a tiniest little bit of play. I bet you can't even see that. Um, it, it affects absolutely nothing, but it's worth mentioning. And then same thing to do with this rotary hub back here. Uh, it, it's got a little bit of kind of uh, left to right play to it, um, you know, as far as the rotation goes. Um, so like when I, if I start to rotate a hook, it'll play just a tiny little bit before it actually catches and starts rotating. Has absolutely no impact on the function. But again, it is worth notice, note, noting. Uh, overall, this is a very, very good vice. Out of these four, this is uh, it's my least favorite, um, mainly because it just isn't super comfortable for me to tie on. Very subjective, so you know, don't let that discourage you. This is a very high quality vice. From everything I've read, uh, Wolf's customer service is fantastic. I've never had to use it, but I've read a lot of accounts of people having small issues and. Everything I've I've seen and heard says that they uh, they will take care of you. So if you plunk down one hundred and seventy dollars on this vice, it's one that's going to last you for a long time. And if something does go out, you will be taken care of. It does have a lifetime warranty against um, you know manufacturer defects. It doesn't account for misuse and and uh, treating it like garbage that kind of thing. Um, but again, everything that I've heard says it's it's top notch customer service. It's also made in the USA, which uh, you know is always a good thing. 
So overall, very good quality vise. Very simple, true rotary vise that's going to get the job done. Um, I definitely recommend uh, you know taking a look at it. But for me personally, out of these four main $200 vices, this one is definitely my least favorite. Now we're going to move on to the super popular Peak Rotary Vice. This is a true rotary style vice made in the USA in Colorado and retails for about $150 to $160. You can get this vice as a pedestal or a C-clamp and this particular one is a pedestal. Overall this is a very well made quality vice. It's made almost entirely of stainless steel or aircraft grade aluminum. There is a little bit of plastic but not that much. Of note the rotary tension screw and the screw for the bobbin cradle are both plastic. However for about $15 you can order brass screw replacements and if I was planning to keep this vise as my long-term everyday vise I would probably do that because 15 bucks is not that big a deal. However, these, these plastic screws work just fine. Um, they may wear out over time or possibly break would be the only downside. But um, in operation, they do just fine. So as I said, this is a true rotary vise. The rotary action on this vise is very smooth. It's smooth all the way through. It doesn't want to just drop when you hit this position where the weight of the jaw starts pulling on it. It's smooth all the way through. You can adjust the rotary tension with this screw that I mentioned earlier. You can lock it down. So if I'm going to tie a clouser, I'll flip it upside down and lock it into place so it's not going to move. Or you can loosen it and back it off so that it rotates very, very smoothly and very freely uh, for super fast kind of rotary style tying. This vice does come with a bobbin cradle. I don't have it installed. However, it's worth noting that, that it does come with the standard vice. Uh, when I bought this vice, I acquired it used and it was supposed to be pretty much brand new and it came with the standard jaws which hold hooks from 2 watt down to quote as small as you can find is what they claim um, again I can't make any any sort of uh, confirmation on the small end because I just don't tie tiny stuff but when I got the vise I had a heck of a time getting it to hold a hook properly and it really for a while there I was really starting to wonder if I had gotten a lemon or if why people liked this vise so much because I just couldn't get it to hold the hook but it occurred to me that maybe because I bought the jaws used that the, the or the vise used that the jaws were worn or something along those lines so I ordered a set of saltwater jaws mainly because I tie bigger hooks so the upper end is more important to me than the lower end and when I got those jaws they hold every hook I've put in it just fine. So I think the jaws that I had on the, the used one I bought were just worn or something along those lines. So I can't blame that on the factory at all. Um, replacement jaws for these are about $35. You can buy saltwater jaws and midge jaws. So for 70 bucks, on top of what you pay for the vise, you can get jaws that will hold just about any hook you'd ever want to tie on. Um, they also make a tube fly head for this vise. I haven't messed around with that yet. And then they make an, uh, what they call their LIRS, I believe. I think it's like large iron retention system or something along those lines. And it's a pretty unique set of jaws that is designed to hold the biggest hooks out there. So if you're tying, you know, sailfish and marlin and, and huge, huge saltwater hooks, you might want to look into one of those. But for my needs, these saltwater jaws are fantastic and they do just fine. So to put a, put a hook in this vise, it's very similar to the Wolf Atlas in that it has a large adjustment nut here that you use to, to uh, open or close the, the jaws to kind of get it in the range of the hook you're using and then you tighten it with the camshaft. Um, so I'm going to, I've got a size 6 Daiichi 2546 saltwater hook here and I'm simply going to adjust this. It takes a, takes a little bit of fiddling for me. Um, so I'm just not used to this style of vise. Get it where I want it and then lock it into place. Once you get it set properly, I mean, I could easily bend this hook out, no problem. Um, holds it extremely well. Jumping up to a bigger hook here, I've got an A-Rex Predator Stinger hook, size 6 aught. So I'm just going to back that off some, get it well back in there, and again, it holds this giant 6 aught hook no problem whatsoever. Um, that's a feature that I always appreciate at any vise. There's nothing that irritates me more than a hook slipping. Um, some things that I really like about this vise. First off, I really, really like the pedestal base on this. It's super heavy. It's wide. It doesn't slip. It doesn't tip. It just doesn't move around. 
Um, I know you can't really see the pedestal here. I'll try to show it to you. It has a, a recessed uh, pocket and then it also has these uh, two other holes in the base for the, where you could put the uh, you could adjust the uh, position of the of the vise. So if I wanted to, I could put it to this closer hole closest to me and have it be right up near me or the furthest one. And then they also sell some uh, replacement uh, uh, replacement uh, or not replacement uh, sh uh, accessory shafts that you can use to put in these, like for light attachment, magnifying glass, all that kind of thing. Um, really, really nice pedestal vise. I'm very, very happy with that portion of it. Um, I like the overall build of this vise. It's extremely smooth. There's no wobble. There's no shake. Everything is just tight and smooth, um, which I really appreciate. I mentioned some wobble in the Wolf Atlas vise. There is absolutely none of this that in this vise. Um, some things that I dislike about this vise, just like the Atlas, I just don't care for this style of, of vise jaws when it comes to putting the hook in it. I just find that that it takes too much too much tweaking around trying to find the the sweet spot and to get it in. Now that's that's my preference. It's you know as I said before, this is all very subjective, um, and I'm used to just a slightly different style of vise. So you know take that with a grain of salt. Um, it does, like I said, it does come with a with the bobbin cradle. Not important to me. However, lots of people like a bobbin cradle, so you know it's worth noting that if you spend that 150 or 160 bucks, you will get the bobbin cradle. Unlike the Wolf Atlas vise, um, it's a very simple vise. There, there's not a lot to it. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. You won't be overwhelmed with a bunch of features that you don't need. It's designed to do basically two things: hold the hook extremely well and give you rotary time. Um, you can adjust the the jaw position to account for different styles of hooks. There's a there's an Allen screw right here that you would loosen up, and you can raise and lower this a, a little bit, not a, not a ton. I don't do any of that, as I mentioned before. I simply, uh, if if a hook is is not 100% spinning on its own axis, that's just not an issue to me whatsoever. Um, overall, I like this vise a little bit more than the Wolf Atlas. Uh, I find that it's not quite as cramped up at the jaws when I'm tying with my big hands. Um, I do wish that there was more room between the, the end of the jaws and where it, it comes up to the shaft here. Um, but that's a that's a pretty small complaint. Um, when I tie in clousers, um, I mentioned that complaint on the Wolf Atlas. Um, this this is a little more roomy. Um, the Wolf Atlas angle was you know more like this, really steep, whereas this one's down a little bit. So it gives me a little bit more room to kind of get in there with my hands and uh, work on the underside of a clouser or something along those lines. Um, there's a bunch of different accessories that you can get for this vise, so that's kind of cool. Everything from you know wastebasket attachment, profile plate. Um, you can buy a D arm that uh, it, it basically puts mounts onto this and it it comes out. So you would grab that to rotate instead of just a straight vertical little shaft here. Uh, for me. It's really super easy to just use my finger against the shaft and rotate it so, you know, I don't have the D-arm. But it's worth noting that there is a lot of those accessories and upgrades that you can make to this vise. Uh, overall, for $150, bucks, this is a very high quality vise that's going to hold a hook very well. And as I said, you can buy different jaws for it for relatively inexpensive and uh, be able to cover, you know, any hook you would ever want to tie on. While this is not my favorite of these four vices, it would be pretty hard to go wrong with this one. It's going to do pretty much everything you need it to do, and it's going to do it well. Um, for me, it basically comes down to this style of jaw with the, the the nut versus the screw up at the up at the jaws, and I just I just don't care for this style. I never have, and I probably never will. But again, that's my preference, and uh, you might just absolutely love it. This is a very, very popular vice. People that have these vices swear by them, and uh, you know, I could definitely see why. It's quality. It's well built. It's going to last a lifetime. Uh, I've never used Peaks customer service, but everything I've ever read or been told, just like with Wolf, says it's fantastic. So I wouldn't uh, wouldn't hesitate on that end. So again, not my favorite of these four. But that's not so much based on how it's built or how it operates. It's just my own particular thoughts and my own. The next device I'm going to look at here is the Renzetti Traveler. The Traveler is a true rotary style vice made in the USA and retails for about oh, $160 to $180. Um, I see the prices kind of all over the place. They also make this vice in a 
a whole bunch of different options as far as the base and you can get it a saltwater version and a blacked out version and they all cost different price points this is the basic um, I think it's the 2200 if I recall Renzetti Traveler pedestal vise you can get this as a pedestal or a c-clamp however I prefer the pedestal this is a very simple very well made easy to use vise that is extremely popular out of the four vices that I'm going over today, I've owned this one for the longest. I've had this for oh a couple years now, and I've tied on it quite a bit, kind of as my my travel vice when I just want to change things up and tie in something different. Um, of course, I I have a vice collection, so I'm always t tying on different vices. Um, as I said, this is a rotary style vice, and it has a rotary tension knob that is on the near side here. It's a plastic screw that you can use to, you know, lock it down. If I want to tie a clouser, simply flip it upside down, lock it. It's not going to move. And then, of course, I can back it way off and have it be super free. Um, so you can set it where, kind of where you want it. This is a pedestal, pedestal style. The pedestal is, is very basic. Um, it's pretty small, pretty light. It has two recessed pockets. Um, but really nothing to, to point out or, or unique about it whatsoever. Um, now this is a vice that I prefer to tie on. As I mentioned earlier, I don't like the type with the big adjustment screw and the, and the draw call it style cam. I much prefer this style of vice. I've had this for, for a long time. This is what I've been used to. Um, according to specs this will hold from 4 aught down to I think they say size 28 maybe 5 aught I can't remember but um, I again I've never never tied anything uh, that small um, to put a hook in this vise you simply put the hook in and then you use there's an, a little adjustment screw on the on the tire side that you use to adjust so the jaws are closing and they're just closing in on the hook and then you simply lock it you can see it is held extremely well and it's super super quick for me to do that um, because you can just turn that little adjustment screw and you know exactly where you need to set it you need the jaws just touching the hook as soon as you do that boom you pop it and lock it into place um, you don't have to put a ton of pressure on the cam that's something else that I really like it's really quick really easy you don't have to exert yourself very very simple to operate this is a size 6 Daiichi 2546 saltwater hook um, I tie on this size and style of hook more than any other hook, so it's always one of the first ones that I put in any vise to see how it holds it. Um, let's see, I got this 6 aught Predator hook here from A-Rex. This is not designed to hold a hook this big, at least per manufacturer's specs, but we'll see how it does here. Yeah, no problem. So even though it says 4 aught. This is a 6 aught hook and it holds it without any issue at all. Um, this is a true rotary style vise and in order to achieve true rotary style where the hook shank is spinning on its own axis, the hook shank has to be lined up with this shaft as it comes out. Now you can see that with this big hook, that this hook is actually well above this shaft. So when I rotate it, it's going to rotate in a big wider circle, not specifically on its own axis. Again, for me, I just don't care about that. However, with this vise, you can adjust it. There's a screw on the near side. You loosen the screw, and then I don't know how well you, no, you can't see it on that side. We'll shift flip it over here. So we just there's this screw right here. You take that screw out, and there's three positions. There's three holes where you can mount the, the jaws to kind of account for different hook sizes. Uh, personally, I just keep it in the middle, and I don't worry about it. Um, very simple vise. It comes with a bobbin cradle. I don't have it on here because, again, I don't tie with bobbin cradles. Uh, there's really not much to it. Things that I like about this vise, I love how quickly and easy it is to stick a hook in there. Stick it in, turn that screw, lock it into place, and this thing holds it really, really well. Um, the rotary is smooth all the way through. I can add rotary tension or remove rotary tension as needed. And it's just it's just a joy to tie on this vise. That's that's kind of the best thing I can say about it. It holds a hook really really well, just about any hook, and it's just enjoyable vise to tie on. Um, it's very light. It's very smooth. Everything about it. I, I think this is some sort of aluminum. I don't think this is stainless steel, but don't quote me on that. I can't remember. I'd have to look that up. Um, but it's very well made. Very smooth. 
and just does what it's designed to do. And uh, I appreciate that in, in any sort of a, of a tool. And ultimately, that's what these are. And uh, this vise does, does what it's designed to do very well. Things that I don't like about this vise, one, the pedestal is really, really light, and it moves around a lot. Now, it's hard to knock that as an issue because this is sold as the Traveler. So it's not going to come with a great, big, huge, heavy base because that would sort of defeat the purpose of a vice that is easily to throw in your bag and take out on a trip and pull out on a picnic table or on the back of a truck or something and tie. So I can't knock that at all as the vice itself, but it is worth noting that of the, these four pedestals, this one is the lightest and it does move around super easy. It's not really tippy, but it just kind of moves around when you're tying. Um, the plastic knob that controls the rotary tension has a tendency to back off, back off and I find that a rather annoying. Um, when you, you know, I tighten it down, I like to tie with a fair amount of tension and I'll get it set where I want and generally speaking by the time I come to the end of a fly pattern it's already backed off and it's getting looser. Um, not, not, not a huge deal but again a little bit of a nuisance. Um, those are really about the only two things that I don't like about this vise. Um, it's got plenty of room for me it, with the shape of these jaws. I can tie without feeling super cramped. Um, when I flip it upside down to tie a clouser, I have no issues there. The cam would be locked and uh, I have you know plenty of room. Um, really nothing nothing to complain about there whatsoever. Um, Honestly, when I when I went about getting these vices together to make this video, I, I pretty much assumed that this would come out as my absolute favorite. Um, partly because I'd been tying on it for a couple years, and partly just by my own bias, I guess, and and just how much I enjoy this vice. Um, and while it is it is easily my second favorite vice, it, it was a bit of a surprise that it did not come out as my favorite. Um, and I'm gonna gonna jump to my my favorite in our last vice here in just a second. But overall, great great vice comes with lifetime warranty. Um, according to everything I've heard, Renzetti's customer service is pretty good. Um, I've I've heard a few small complaints about them being slow to respond to, to emails and things, um, but I've never never experienced that myself. Um, the common thing on this vice that that tends to wear out there's a little rubber o-ring thing right here. I don't know how you can see it. It's, it's kind of green against the black head of the vise. Um, and that that has a tendency to wear out as you tie thousands and thousands of flies and it kind of gets stretched, stretched and released and stretched and released. Um, but it's like, you know, a dollar or something to replace it. So it's not that big a deal. But um, I have heard a lot of that about people people needing to get those from, from the factory or um, I've also heard of, of people having the jaws chip or break after, you know, again, thousands and thousands of dozens of flies. Um, but again, everything I've heard says their customer service is pretty solid. So this would be kind of my, my second place vice. I really, really recommend this one. It, it's just a joy to tie on. It's going to do just about anything you need it to do. It's very simple and uh, it just it just flat out works. That's, that's really the best thing I can say about this vise. It just works. It's very very easy to use. You get used to, to the way you adjust that the cam and, the, and this little screw. It takes about half a second to put any size of hook in there, adjust it, and tighten it up, and then you're boom, you're tying. So check this one out. I really do recommend it for the in the price range. I personally prefer it over the Peak and the Wolf Atlas. Um, and while you can't go wrong with any of these vices, I, I really, really do think this one is a very high quality vice that anybody right. would be happy with. So the last vice that I'm going to look at here is the Griffin Montana Mongoose. This is a true rotary style vice made in the USA and Montana and comes at a price point of $170 to $200. Um, this one seems to fluctuate a lot. I've looked at all kinds of different online fly shops and things. I've seen them high as, as high as like $250. But if you shop around, you can get it for less than 200 bucks. I think I paid around $174 for this on Amazon when I got it. Um, so it's one where you really do want to look around, but uh, you can definitely get it for under $200. This vise comes with both a pedestal and a C-clamp, which is something I think is super cool. It actually comes with a, a really neat little hard case, something like a, a hard pistol case um, with padding on the inside. It comes with some extra goodies as well. It comes with a bobbin cradle, which I don't have installed on here. 
Um, as I said, it comes with a pedestal and a C-clamp. I haven't used the C-clamp, so I can't really say how that rates to other C-clamps because I just don't like C-clamps in general. Um, it also comes with a Griffin bobbin, a hackle gauge. I think it, there was a bobbin threader. Uh, I was really surprised it came with, with some goodies. Um, when I, I've always read and heard very good things about these vices. Um, people that own these swear by them. They always recommend them when these, you know, questions of which which vice should I get comes up. But I, I've always just thought this was a vice that I would not like. And I'm not 100% sure why. I think it's based on the looks. It looks different. It's assembled differently. It looks, to my eye, it looks kind of like it's been pieced together and it looks a little bit kind of hokey and cheap. So I've always avoided it. However, when I picked one up for, you know, to in prep for this video, I was absolutely blown away with how much I like this vice. And I'll get into that here shortly. Um, the jaws on this vice operate pretty similar to the Renzetti Traveler. There's a uh, adjustment knob on the near side where you adjust the jaws and then the cam lever to lock them in place. So to put a hook in this vise, just put the hook in, use that screw to, to adjust it to where it's just touching and then use the cam to lock it in place. And I could easily bend out this hook. I've done that in the past. This is the size 6 Daiichi 2546. Um, very, very, very strong jaws that will grip a hook like few vices that I've dealt with and requires very little fiddling with to get different size hooks in here. Per the manufacturer's claim, this will hold 4 aught down to size 28, I believe. Again, I can't confirm the, the size 28 business because, good lord, who wants to tie that small? But what I can confirm is that we'll actually hold hooks larger than 4 aught. This is the same A-Rex uh, Predator Stinger hook size 6 aught. And I have no issue tying on this, this size of hook whatsoever. Get it in there. Again, not going anywhere. Um, this vise is, is very smooth in rotation. Um, has a, has a, uh, a rotary tension knob on the underside here where you can tighten it down. So if I'm going to tie a clouser, again, I just tighten it down all the way and lock it into place. It's not going to move. Um, one thing of note is that when you back this screw off all the way, it's not going to, to turn anywhere near as easily as these other vices. It's not one where you can just let it go and it just swings around on a pendulum. Um, I, I'm not sure why that is. I don't know if maybe I, I goofed it up putting it together or something even possibly, but not a big deal for me because I like to tie with rotary tension. However, that's one thing worth noting is that it's not going to back off and be as loose and spinning as a lot of other vices. Um, things that I like about this, or things, yeah, things that I like about this vice, um, this thing is just an absolute pleasure to use. I, I don't know any other way to say it, I, and I've just been blown away with it. It holds hooks so well. Put them in there. Everything is, is smooth, and it's easy to adjust and lock it to place. It doesn't require a ton of pressure on the cam lever to get it to lock. Um, it's got the, the, the D arm style that comes out, so when you're doing your rotary, you can just grab a hold of that. Not a big deal to me, but it is a cool little feature. Um, like I said, it does come with a bobbin cradle. Cradle. I don't use it, so I don't have it installed. But uh, um, I'm not entirely sure what the vise overall is made out of. It seems to be made out of a bunch of different components. There's uh, these little screws here, like for the the rotary or the bobbin cradle, and the the screw that that locks the shaft into the the pedestal vise. They're plastic. Um, the cam lever feels like some sort of a hard plastic. The jaws are, are metal. I'm not sure what, but the you know this arm piece here, this feels like a molded hard plastic of some sort. Um, the stem feels probably aluminum. The, the rotary hub again is also probably some sort of aluminum. So it's got a bunch of different a bunch of different materials. Um, and it while it definitely it definitely looks a little bit different and it put it's pieced together differently. This thing is just fantastic to tie on. I just can't overemphasize that. This thing holds hooks so, so well, it's unbelievable. You know, this is a this is a stainless steel saltwater hook right here, this Daiichi 2546, and I can bend this hook out really, really easily. It's just, it's just these jaws are like bulldogs. They just clamp on and they do not let go. Um, there's not, there's not much about this vise that I don't recommend. 
Um, the things that I don't like about it, the, the main thing I don't like about it is the pedestal base. Out of these four vices, it's the, the smallest footprint of a pedestal base. And it has a tendency to slide around, especially when I'm, when I'm doing rotary tying. It wants to kind of tip a little bit, um, and, but mostly it wants to slide. Um, I've rectified all that kind of issue by putting down a little self-adhesive um, piece of felt on my tying desk. So that really helps eliminate the, the, tie, the sliding issue. Uh, but it is worth noting. Um, that's about the only thing that I don't like about this vise is the pedestal. Um, it actually has a lot of room for, for when I'm tying. Um, you can adjust the jaws here with this screw to, to account for, for different size hooks so that they'll spin on their own axis. Again, I don't do that, but that is an option. Um, the fact that it comes with the hard case, it comes with a pedestal and a C-clamp, it comes with goodies, it's just super, super cool to me. You really do get a lot for that $170 to $200 that you're going to put down on this vise. Um, it holds a wide variety of hooks. It's a joy to tie on. Um, I, I, I truly cannot say enough good things about this vise. I, I honestly thought that the Renzetti would come away as my favorite of, from these four vices, but it's not even close. The Griffin Montana Mongoose is absolutely my favorite and is the vise that I will recommend to everybody that ever asks, you know, what vise should I upgrade to at that $200 budget. I just, I have never encountered a vise that I enjoy tying on more at this price point. Um, I have a bunch of vices. I have a Dynaking Deluxe or a, a Deluxe Indexer. I have a Stonfo Transformer. I have a Renzetti Master. I have a Regal Revolution. And yet, I often find myself reaching for this vise just because it is so nice to tie on. It's so easy to use. It does everything that I want it to do extremely well. And, uh, you know, like those are real high-end vices, and I reach for this one oftentimes over all of those. Um, I've never used Griffin customer service, so I can't speak to how they would handle it if I had an issue. Um, but everything I've heard has been very good. So... As I said at the start of this video, there, there's a lot of sub $200 vices. These four are the ones that get recommended the most from what I've seen online. And out of these four vices, while I really, really like the Renzetti Traveler, I am absolutely in love with the Griffin Mongoose. And this is definitely my choice and the clear cut winner um, for just purposes of everything being done well and just flat out enjoyable to tie on. So. Hopefully this will help somebody out there if they're looking to upgrade their vice, give you an idea of what these vices are all about, and maybe help narrow your selection. Keep in mind that this is all subjective, and what I like in a vice could be completely different than what somebody else likes in a vice. So I'm not making any claims at all that, that this is the number one vice out there, and that's the number two, and that's number three. I just got these rated in my own personal favorites. You can't go wrong with any of these vices. They're all extremely well made, all made in the USA. They will all last you a lifetime. But for me personally, in my money, I'm going with the Griffin Montana Mongoose every single time. So thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully this video will help somebody out and help you make a decision. And I hope you enjoy whatever you end up with.